O'Reilly was left out of this team during the week to make way for the return of Colin McFadden, but he gets his chance to impress again this evening. Donegal bidding for a place in the Ulster final for the fifth year running. They are the big favourites coming to St. Turnix Park this evening. Derry haven't beaten them in the championship since 2008. And the ball is cleared and it's come back out to Fergal Doherty. A goal chance for Enda Lynn and Paul Durkett with a fabulous save. A stunning stop from Paul Durkett. Keeps Derry out and that would have been the dream start for Derry for sure. Great save from the big Donegal man. Donegal forced out towards the Derry 65 metre line. Frank McLean, now Colin McFadden. Donegal will be patient. They wrote the book on it. Here's Oren McNeilish with the shot, and McNeilish with the score from a very good distance out. And their patience paid off. And it's the first point of this Ulster semi final for Donegal. Carl Lacey. Ryan McHugh, space to pick out a man, and he's got his clubmate Paddy McBrearty, and McBrearty slots it over. Made in Kilcar, executed in Clonus. Ryan McHugh's ball in to Paddy McBrearty, and his defender thought he knew where he was initially. And Thomas Mallon, a gift of possession for Donegal, and Derry could be in trouble here. Christy Toy, did he foul the ball? Well, he had so much time, Christy Toy. But that, unfortunately, from Derry's point of view, coming from Thomas Mallon's kick-out, which was just a gift. <laughs> Kevin Johnston. Sending that in long. Now it's Caelan O'Boyle, and he's got free, and O'Boyle has put that over. Excellent point for Derry. Just one behind. Donegal have let them off the hook several times with some bad wides down at the other end. But Kevin Johnston's pass was perfect. The run, great from Caelan O'Boyle. And the finish, not bad either. Neil McGee didn't fancy the shot. McGee can certainly punch a hole in the dairy cover. Carl Lacey can do the same. Oren McNeilish is screaming for it, but they go back out the field to Colin McFadden. Now McFadden launches it long. Caught by Thomas Mallon. Some of the Donegal shooting has left a fair bit to be desired, and Rory Gallagher certainly won't be pleased with some of the decisions the attacking players have made. Here's Mark Lynch now. There's a little bit of a gap for Lynch to steady down and take the shot and draw Derry level. Four each in the 22nd minute, and Mark Lynch with the equaliser four points apiece Frank McLean or McNeilish didn't fancy the shot Frank McLean might or McNeilish will take it on and McNeilish has pushed that one wide well this is becoming a massive issue for Donegal now Colin McFadden, Frank McLean again, Colin McFadden, and he's got gloves on, he's dropped the ball, the conditions are difficult, McFadden gets away from two Derry defenders, and there is the score from Colin McFadden, they're first in close to 19 minutes of this Ulster semi-final, and Donegal nudge in front by five points to four, Chrissy McKay, five points apiece and a great reaction from Derry to Donegal going in front. This could go right down to the wire. Ryan McHugh. Michael Murphy's in there, a wonderful save from Thomas Mallon in the Derry goal. Michael Murphy had gone into full forward. Neil Gallagher had no joy in there earlier on in the game. And Michael Murphy was so close to that all-important goal.
This is the 23rd meeting of Derry and Donegal in the championship. There's never been a draw. Here's Colin McFadden. Scored one point during the first half. McFadden fancies this on the 20 meter line. And that has just trickled over the crossbar. That is just the start Donegal wanted. And Colin McFadden, like so many of his attacking colleagues, had problems in front of the post during the first half. But that is a perfect start to the second. And Donegal nudge in front by six points to five. Sean Liam McGoldrick. Keep ball from Derry. Now it's drilled in. And wide from Owen Bradley. And is it Derry's turn now to start kicking things away? That's their seventh wide. Colin McFadden. Or McNeilish. Michael Murphy absolutely leathered that Michael Murphy and it's a brilliant point 7-5 Donegal lead they've got the two points since the match restarted Derry have kicked three second half wide Michael Murphy now back in a left corner back position, Fergal Doherty, they go out the field and start again. Kieran McFall, then Niall Holly. They need a score, Derry. They need one, and they've got one. It's a good reply from Niall Holly, who's had a very good game at midfield for Derry. Mark Lynch. Derry are a point behind. That's a shot to nothing from Mark Lynch, but Caelan O'Boyle is under it. Neil Gallagher there too. O'Boyle couldn't hang on to it. And Donegal had plenty of defenders back there. Ryan McHugh dropped back into position. Christy Toy and a scrappy period of the match. Here's Neil McGee. Martin McElhenney. This would be some point. And it is some point for Martin McElhenney. Outstanding score. Here comes Donegal again. It's Neil Gallagher. Gallagher flips it in. Now it's a chance for O'Reilly. Goal. Martin O'Reilly. Applying the finish in the 10th minute of the second half. And Donegal have made their move. And is it curtains for Derry? A lovely sidestep from Martin O'Reilly. Only added to the team late. And now a totally different feel to this. No way through. And Derry needs something to happen here. Kevin Johnston in. Now there's an opportunity for Caelan O'Boyle, and the ball has gone over the bar. It got a touch. There was a Donegal hand in there as Caelan O'Boyle got his shot away. Mark Lynch now a little closer. And again, Mark Lynch. They need a goal. Here's Benny Heron. Point would be welcome, and that's a lovely finish from Benny Heron. Benny Heron gets their fourth point of the second half, and now there's only two between them. Anthony Thompson straight into the action for Donegal. Challenges on him. Their last score 18 minutes ago. That was the goal from Martin O'Reilly. They've made hard work of this. They're leading by two. Paddy McBrearty with an important kick from this free. McBrearty, it's come off the post. Who's quickest to react? Ryan McHugh was in there after it. McBrearty tried to get to it. Challenge was fair, says the referee. Here's Michael Murphy to make it a three-point game, and that's exactly what Michael Murphy has done. When Donegal are in trouble, they send for this man, and he always comes up with the goods. Three between them. One nine to nine points. So Derry still in the market for a goal. Desperate for one. <laughs> Benny Heron has been fouled by Anthony Thompson. Mark Lynch taking it quickly. The Donegal cover had retreated. Is there a score at the end of it? They need one. Durkin looks up and the white flag goes up and it's Kieran McFall who's got the score. Oh, 
Michael Murphy. Well, Derry have got to come out of their defensive setup to get the ball back. Donegal not under any threat here. And there is the whistle. It's over. It is all over. And Donegal, for the fifth year in a row, are heading for the Ulster final. But Derry gave it absolutely everything. They just couldn't get the goal they so badly needed. And in the end, Michael Murphy steered Donegal home. They're through to the Ulster final. They have beaten Derry on a scoreline of 1-9 to 10 points. Look, we're delighted, number one, to get through, you know. I don't think we played anywhere near our best, but I think you'd have to give Derry a lot of credit for that. You know, they worked exceptionally hard and made life difficult for us, but at the same time, I thought we played well at times and we deserved to get through. And here is confirmation of the Ulster final lineup. It's Johnny Gall against Monan on July the 19th, and that's for the third time in a row that they're going to meet in the final. Well, Desi Dole, you were there doing commentary for us on Saturday Sport on, on radio yesterday. What did you make of the game? Uh, poor game overall, but Donegal will be absolutely thrilled. And the, the, thrilled because of the per, not, not the performance, the fact that they won playing badly. They're in an Ulster final, and it's dampened down the expectations of the county because I kind of got the feeling there that they were running, yeah. away, with, they were running away with themselves. They kind of felt that uh, they were going extremely well. Yeah, your mic is you're off mic there. I'll just I'll go, let me go to you for a second, Martin. Ten minutes to go. You know, Derry were right back in. Were you afraid as a Donegal man that you know you might lose it at that stage? No, you felt that the match. You know, Donegal are very good with a couple of points ahead. I mean, Donegal sometimes two points ahead. This is other teams about seven, eight points ahead. But just think, looking at it from a Donegal point of view, the hype there as they came into the match and the hype was with Donegal. We're going to win all Ireland's minor and senior, and you know, after the Armagh game. And I just remember telling telling you a story way back. You know about. Banty McEnany played against Thomas's team with the Monon team and they got beat by a point that day and put up a good performance and he was down in holidays in, in Kerry afterwards and there's this fellow down in the pub and Kerry's on a drink and he says to him, that's a good team you have there but they're very small, he says, a lot of them small and Banty says to him, what would you do, send a look at the Kerry women up to Monaghan and your man says, he says, well, yeah, well, but they'll have to be pregnant before they go up, he says to him <laughs> and I just think, that we, this last week, the hype in Donegal, we we're going to send all these players down to Kerry and everywhere and just, there was, there was too much hype at the whole thing and look, the important thing was the performance and get over the line from Donegal's point of view and that's what they did and yeah. they're going to need a big performance in the final but be happy enough with the performance particularly the likes of Neil Galler, Neil McGee, uh, the goal came at an important stage and it seems that Donegal needs a goal to win matches and yeah. they've got the goals at important stages in games because they don't only score in what nine and ten points, eleven points in games. If, Tomás if you were a Donegal man would you be bothered by the poor performance or would you feel they can pick it up again? No I think it'd be good I mean if you look at it I mean Rory Gallagher would sit down on, on Sunday night and, and, and or Saturday evening and, and think there's a lot to work on. I mean, the, Donegal didn't learn anything from the Armagh game. They were exposed a few times uh, yesterday, and that will help him. You know, I think he'll, he'll have something to work on with the team. He'll be able to ground them very quickly. Um, I look, I suppose, Des, if you look at it, Derry had opportunities, but it was that experience, confidence, patience that, that carried, yeah. that know-how of being there the last few years that carried Donegal. They don't panic. Teams, like, even their the question marks don't come into their head. They just do it, you know, yeah. and, and th that experience... But yet you felt they were slow at the start. They, they weren't switched on, you felt. I don't. I don't think. I think it's very dangerous when you come out of a game like the Armagh game, and like Martin said, a lot of people start talking about all Ireland's and start talking ahead. Very, very hard not to let that slip into your head, you know. And players, I don't think Donegal were as tuned in the last day, you know. If you look at here, the ball goes in. Uh, the two McGee lads are inside, and Kellen O'Boyle kicks an easy score. Uh, Fergal Doherty coming up the field here. He, he brushes past two lads here. Normally, not you wouldn't associate that with Donegal. Too easy. Oh, the middle absolutely opens up uh, and the Lynn I suppose should have kicked taken a score here uh, but uh, right leg he doesn't have it it came back out and Donegal uh, turned it over but it, the opportunity was there you know they were in the first half days look Donegal weren't the normal Donegal that mm. you, you, you're you used to I, I think less intensity and well I don't know I think the intensity was there but I just think sometimes teams inter-county teams there was an opportunity here for a goal you know I yeah. mean uh, Ocean Duffy was in if he had just sprinted forward and given the opportunity to get that ball, he, there, there could have been more danger. Um, look, I suppose Derry will be disappointed. You know, they'll, they'll rule wides that they had. I mean, here, straight through the lid. This was the worst example, and Mark Lynch actually capitalised here, and it was a great score. I mean, that's not something you associate with Donegal, yeah. easy passages through the front. Had Derry 
I think their kickouts were poor, even though uh, Thomas Mallon was good the last day. But I think their kickouts, I think they had a lot, a lot of wides in the second half. I think, uh, bizarrely, they made a lot of substitutes towards the end, which didn't make much sense to me. It kind of broke the rhythm of it. Uh, they were creating opportunities. I think Donegal have a pile of to work on. If I was Rory Gallagher, I'd be happy because at least they're learning it here yeah. and not down the road in Croker. And yet, when we look at Derry, I mean, Tomás's list of things that went wrong for them there, they still had a chance to win it with a few minutes to go. Where do you think yeah, they... They had, they had they lost their discipline a bit, because only, well, they gave away nine frees, I think, in the whole match. We see it here, ball into Keelan or Boyle as well, which caused problems. It's interesting, Donegal didn't go with a, an out-and-out -out sweeper. They didn't play Mark McHugh. They normally would play the sweeper. They didn't do that. So they created that, that maybe that problem is not having a sweeper there, but we look at going in there. Uh, they won it, and that was a bad, bad must be there. And then we get, they get a free after. This is an important stage in the game, mm -hmm. and Owen Bradley normally would kick them over the bar. Now we look at the keeper, uh, Thomas Mallon, who was man of the match in the, in the game against him. We see that kick out there, the kick out he gave, but yesterday he was trying to, or Sunday, Saturday, he was trying to kick out, short kick out, caught here, Martin McHenry picks it up, Chris Joy, and that's the one time you'll open up from a bad kick out. Mm. The keeper has become very, very important in Gaelic football. Their teams, club teams, county teams, putting outfield players and goals now. And they just, you know, normally he's, he was good kick out, but I think he gave away about one four that caught the kick out. We even remember the one, uh, the Neil Galler one as well, where Neil Galler won the ball very well in the middle of the field and read their kick outs. So he got work in the kick outs, you know, we see it. Teams was carry out the Masters. Are they worked mm -hmm. on Cluxon's kickouts? They worked last year in Dorkin's kickouts. It's becoming a very important part of Gaelic football. It's all about and just possession, like. yeah, having mm -hmm. the possession and yeah. you know the keeper being able to do. It. And we're watching Cluxon the way he's kicking them out today. So it's important. But Thomas Mallon's a very, very good goalkeeper. And maybe sometimes it's not his fault. It's the players out the fields not giving him that option or making that mm -hmm. making the run. Okay, Desi, one man who everyone here fell in love with during the game was Neil Gallagher of Donegal. Yeah, well, Neil Gallagher is immense. Um, a super player throughout and a real leader. Uh, just have a look at possession during the game. It was about 50-50 in both teams. Like, Derry were well in this game and we were very disappointed today. Ball was in play for about 46 minutes. Uh, you would say that Donegal overall won the kickouts and the real reason was because of Neil Gallagher. Um, Michael Murphy had 30 possessions there, Sean Leo at 28, but the leader and a fabulous performance was Neil Gallagher. Mm. And, and that's what Donegal have just after half time. The game was level, the Derry crowd stood up and clapped their players in. They, they kind of felt a bit of an ambush was on, but in the second half, a player like Neil Gallagher, the throw ups both throw-ups he won, start of the first half, start of the second half, and it sets the tone for a team. A big, strong midfielder winning them balls. Second one here, you see him, and this is what the Donegal players were doing, back tracking back in a wave, and Neil Gallagher was led by example throughout the game, getting back there, covering the defence and giving plenty of options. And then in this one, Brendan Rodgers is coming down, they're bearing down on goal. There's a great opportunity here for a score, and what you see is Neil Gallagher, you highlight him there, in incredible interception this one, and it just shows his experience, his know-how and he's just such an undervalued player because he goes about his business quietly at, at the age of 32 33 but excellent again here breaking the ball but not breaking the ball down to anyone or smashing it laying it off perfectly and in this one you see the Derry player hands on the hips he don't do that with Neil Gallagher around mm. driving straight <laughs> through the defense Martin McEnany was playing really well this year and Neil giving the ball into Marty Wright, and he's very little to do, finished it very well though, and, yeah. and another player that's doing well and making a big impact, but a tremendous performance yesterday. And afterwards, he, he, yeah, he joined you in the commentary box did, to talk he, to he us could, on he, the radio. He gave a great interview after, uh, yeah. I don't know where he got his energy from, he went, idea, he, right, he, went, he went downstairs, <laughs> made a few a cup of tea and a few sandwiches in for everyone, he just gave a complete performance, yeah, yeah. Uh, great display yesterday. He's a real leader, isn't he, Martin? Yeah, his ability. We see with, with that kick out, his ability to read the yeah. game. He was the dairy midfielder have left him standing. He read the situation was happening. That's a good sign of a player. A player that can read danger, see danger, which is important, and read that situation before anybody yeah, else on the field. Sense. And that makes you that that gives you that extra, makes you that yeah. different, makes you that inter, a great the difference in a good inter county player and a great inter county player. And one other those injury talking points that came up to Moss, a couple of issues there that were discussed by you earlier on today? Yeah, look, as I suppose, towards the end there, it got a bit scrappy. Um, here we see um, an injury there that took place and... Kevin Johnson. Look, Kevin Johnson went down and it, it turned out that he had a very, very se serious knee injury and it took an awful long time. First of all, he should have been stretchered off and look, it isn't often that it does happens in the GA, you have to say that, but the physio here couldn't even lift him. I mean, he was in serious trouble and it took uh, a little while. Here we have, look, this was a second black card and there was a lot of talk about it. Um, Kieran McFall came in and he came at full belt. Now, if you compare that, Des, and this is where I have a problem with consistency, if you compare that with what Graham Riley got sent off with above on Croker today, 
and a black card for both of them. If that doesn't go down as dangerous play, look and look. I, 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 I'm not one to talk about it, and I've got sent off for. Mm. I've got actually got sent off for a lot less than that, <laughs> and I have. And it, it, it's, it is, it's, it's the consistency that isn't there. And I think this yellow card is a get out of jail card for the the refs and or, or the because, black card. Sorry. Yeah. And I, I look, I thought that, that, that could have caused an yeah. injury. Yeah. And I, I, I personally, as, as a player, I used to hate looking in at the Sunday game and fellas just picking out. You know, and saying that's a red card or whatever. But look, refs, refs seem to ref it some way. But that looked like a dangerous tackle to me. It yeah. was late in the game. It was very late. Players were tired, and Kieran McFall had been having a good game up to that stage. But he did. He kind of lashed out. I'd say it was a bit of frustration. Maybe the game he felt might have been going away from him. But it, you it, still it, can't yeah. do that. Though. No, it didn't look there was good. Two like, black it cars. didn't look good, and exactly what Tomas. And saying. this thing that refs sometimes do. They, they sometimes, like because Derry were possibly on the way out there. They say, ah, oh, the game is over. I, I, this is my own idea in here. They, they say the game is over. Sure, look, it doesn't really make a difference if he gets a red or whatever. And sometimes that might be the attitude of refs. Was your young fella took the blow? He, is he okay today? Yeah, he's okay. Yes. Yeah. He'll be all right. He'll be all right. He'll be all right, tough he'll stuff. Be all right for those stuff. But, but you now face Monaghan. Donegal, not you. Donegal mm. now face Monaghan. For the third year in a row in the final, does familiarity breed contempt? Yeah, it does. You know, there's great rivalry there between the two teams. You mm. look at the two teams and you say that Monaghan have a better bench. The better players looking at to come off the bench. That's what you'd have to say. Jesus, the Monaghan. Curry or no good? I just, I just, I just want to tell you an interesting stat on quickly. You know, we have the, you always have the big six and the wee three we see up there. And always, you know, the, big, the interesting one about the big six is that, you know, they're always finals. The last time that three of the, two of the wee three were in the finals was 1922, 23 and 24, when Monan and Cavan met in the final. First time the wee three. So it just shows you how things is changing. And I just say, look, in the past, this wasn't to happen. Now, now we're glad the trouble's over and else, but that pride and that thing that was in them, it doesn't seem to be there. You know, they've lost it a bit in the GA point of view from, you know, players wouldn't leave the throne panel. Players wouldn't be leaving the dairy panel in the past, you know, and they just sat there. And it's not, when we look at that stat, it's very interesting to see that, you know, even at minor and under 21 level, Cavan, Donegal and Monan are getting, getting stronger and it's just you know you know that pride and passion yeah. that they had you know you wouldn't parents wouldn't allow their young fellas to pull out of panels and do things like that there but it's just different it's a change for them you know it's a change for the better every way but it's something that they're going to look at and do it and you know get back right lads were playing soccer other sports up there now that they wouldn't definitely wouldn't yeah. have had in the past Interesting, OK. Well, still early enough in the season, we'll see. Right then, it's time for our weekly look now at the Camogie Championship. And this week, our featured match is Offaly versus Wexford. So let's join our reporter, Anna Geary. Welcome to Burn County Offaly. It lays claim to...